Okay, gentlemen, we're back inside have, after having shotted all of our silver now. We have our silver over here in our pyro cream dish, and it's still damp. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it on the hot plate and dry it for about 15 minutes to make good and sure that all the materials are dry. Now over here, I've set up an example. And I have three dishes across the top and a watch glass at the bottom. And in this, I have three different types of silver that I've processed. And I want to explain a little bit about feedstock. Your solution in your cell, how quick your electrolyte is depleted, will depend on how trashy of a copper product that you introduce into the cell. Now remember, when we dissolved all of our sterling silver into a nitrate solution, we dropped it with copper. Well, our silver cell is basically the same. We will make up a pure nitrate solution of silver nitrate, and we'll start from there, and as more and more copper is dissolved out of the feedstock of the materials that we feed it, the more copper goes into solution, it starts to push the silver out of solution. Just like it did whenever you use the copper to precipitate it from a nitrate solution. This way you're introducing it with your feedstock. Now remember, for each gram of copper that we dissolve, it will displace about 3.4 grams of pure silver. So. If you introduce a feedstock that's high in copper, your electrolyte solution will be depleted. And the more copper you build up in the electrolyte solution, you're no longer purifying silver crystals. You're precipitating copper electrolically with your silver, and you will wind up with an inferior product that doesn't meet a 3.9 or a 4.9 quality standard. Now let me explain over here. This is some of the silver that you've seen originally. If you'll remember in our drying process, I told you I have two different pans of silver here. One that is clean and one that is dirty. Now this right here that I just run is truly not the ideal product because I had some copper. And we learned that from whenever I melted it earlier to shot it, you could see the copper oxides forming on the surface. So copper is always a bad thing in an electrolytic refining cell for silver. Now, a little bit of copper does good in the electrolyte solution because it doesn't allow the crystals to adhere to the surface of the stainless steel bowl. But those copper crystals are not precipitating with your silver, so you're still allowing yourself to have an electrolytically pure silver. So the whole point and the whole theory beside, behind the silver cell is to separate the copper from the silver. So in each step of the process, we want to introduce a feedstock that has as little of the trash or the material that we're trying to remove as possible, and that would be copper. Now, the reason this system works so good in the electrolytic cell is because it's tolerant of copper up to an extent. Once you reach that threshold of copper, you start refining a product that you really started with in the first place trying to remove the copper. So what we have here is the silver that was in the powder cream earlier when I showed you how to dry it. Now, that's a tolerable product for a silver cell right there. That won't deplete your electrolyte too quick. It should come out a good, clean, fine, a final quality product. Now, over here on this other side, we have earlier, if you'll remember, the one, the other pirate cream dish that I showed you that was dark gray, and I told you that that was a trashy copper, that's exactly what that is. And what it was, was it, the, it was the last 
of the silver to precipitate from the nitrate solution. The first crystals that come down will be the purest crystals. The last that falls will be contaminated with copper. They will be intermingled. So the reason that I wound up with these two problems, now this, this was pretty good, but this one over here is because I had too much nitric. Whenever I got ready to precipitate, I still had free nitric. Now, if you'll remember, I give you numbers earlier in this, this video. That's why it's so important to follow the numbers. If you get in a hurry, if you don't follow the numbers, if you don't do something that I've told you about in this system, you will not get the results that you want. You will get results, but it will be because you didn't do something right. So follow the directions to a T. Pay very careful attention to the pointers that I'm giving you, and I guarantee you that you'll produce a final quality product. Now, over here, you'll notice this looks golden. Well, what is that? Well, this was a sample of some gold that I had put up that didn't come out of this feedstock and I'm just showing you for reference purposes. Now the silver cell is set up to run both coin silver and sterling silver. But we have silver that comes from other feedstocks also. I use this silver for encording my gold. I'm a gold refiner. I do carrot gold. We have to encord it with silver. This is the silver that's left over. Within this silver, I have some platinum. I have some palladium. And there's actually some gold. That's what gives this silver its gold in color. Now by running this through the cell, I will be able to trap in the filter basket the gold particles and the platinum particles. And I can later recycle that filter to reclaim any gold or platinum that may be in there. Now, below me right here, I have some good silver. Now this was some silver that I just, sometimes you just hit the nail right on the head. That's exactly what this is. By giving it this type of feedstock, you can run that silver cell or the silver cell that I have designed two times longer than you can with this material. I can run the silver cell four times longer with this material than I can this material because the copper is going to deplete the electrolyte. So it's very important that you follow each step and do each procedure the way I have outlined it. If you deviate in any way, I won't be able to help you. In other words, I've set these processes up trying to give you every fail safe that I believe that may cause you problems. And if you get outside of those parameters, I'm not there to help you. I mean, you can watch this video all day long, but what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to learn from experience. You're going to have to learn from personal experience. You can't learn everything off of the video. But I guarantee you, if you follow these processes the way I have outlined them, I will guarantee you a 98% success rate. And that includes all four. Formulas, all chemicals, all steps, all procedure. You see me right here, right now in front of you doing this, so you know this is possible. If you don't get the results, well then don't get discouraged. Do it again. You can always back up and start over. Patience. Learning. That's what's going to be the key to the type of product that you produce.